Thank you so much for tuning in to this bonus episode of the Momentum Ministry Partners podcast. Uh, we really wanted to just send you a, a special uh, bonus episode for the holidays. Uh, I really hope and pray that your Christmas uh, was wonderful, that you enjoyed some time together uh, celebrating the birth of our Savior. Uh, we wanted to send something to you. Uh, about this time of year, almost every single season, uh, God reminds me of the hope that we have in Christ. Uh, and I wanted to share some of my thoughts with you on this uh, special bonus episode. Uh, and so today we're going to talk about hope. We're going to talk about the hope that we have not only in Christ, uh, but also having a confident hope. One of my uh, things that I like to think about when uh, when even on this podcast, you've heard us define our terms. It's so important uh, to make sure that we're speaking the same language, uh, that when when I say what uh, a leader is in our church or in our uh, ministry context, it's important that you understand uh, the framework of how we define that, right? Uh, when we talk about the word uh, making disciples, when we talk about evangelism, or, you know, we, we use the phrase here at Momentum, we want to make Jesus make sense. Uh, today, when we talk about the word hope, there's all kinds of different uh, definitions. There's different ways that you might describe it. Uh, if you're a parent, as you're talking with your your children, you may say, hey, I hope that we uh, have some snow this year. I hope that we, uh, you know, have uh, a good Christmas. I hope that we don't get sick. I hope we use the word hope in a lot of different contexts and circumstances. Uh, and so as I've thought about this, I've, I've spoke on this, we've uh, done whole themes on it at, at church, uh, different sermons, but uh, I, would, I would boil the word hope down to four different categories. Uh, as I look at scripture, as I've studied this word hope, there's, there's really four different ways that you might describe or use, uh, define the word hope. The first one is, is this, uh, I think we're probably all too familiar with false hope. <laughs> In our world today, we have false hope, right? I I hope I won't regret eating Taco Bell later, right? <laughs> I, I hope that uh, my favorite sports team wins, right? Even though uh, personally I'm a Cubs fan and they lose all the time, right? I, I hope we have a false hope. Uh, it, it's something that we we don't get our hopes up too high because we know that we're probably going to be disappointed. We know we're probably going to be let down. Um, maybe it's even like the, the, I hope I win the lottery, but I know my odds are really bad. Uh, and you can't win if you don't actually play or buy a ticket. Not that I'm endorsing that, but that kind of false hope is so prevalent in our world today. When when you look at our culture, we almost use the word hope in the sense that that we're putting our our confidence in something that we know is going to fail us, in something that we know we really don't have the definition of hope at all. Uh, we don't have that confidence in uh, the second kind of hope. I think we have this this controlled hope, almost as if it's up to me. It's dependent uh, upon me. I can control the outcome. Uh, sometimes we say, I hope I do well on the test uh, because I've studied and I've prepared for the exam that I'm about to take. Uh, really, what we're saying is I'm, I'm putting my confidence in myself, in my own ability. We have this controlled hope. We, we know the outcome. I hope that we can make it on time, and I know it takes about 15 minutes to get there, and we've driven this route <laughs> a number of times. We, we say uh, the word hope in context of a controlled environment, a controlled situation, where we really already kind of know the outcome. We know the result, uh, and, and it's just more of like planning. So false hope is the first one that's very prevalent in our world, a controlled hope, uh, which again is very dependent on us. The third kind of hope maybe you've experienced lately, but the third kind of hope that as I look at our culture today is this like all out of options hope. Uh, I hope my marriage succeeds when things are really on the rocks. Maybe maybe you uh, were a, an adolescent and you said, I hope my parents don't get divorced, right? When you know that your your parents are arguing and they're separated and it's it's bleak, it looks bad, right? Maybe you, you have this uh, hope that we can get out of financial debt when when you know you got no money left and you're living paycheck to paycheck. That all out of options hope it is 
a scary place to be in. And maybe it's in that all out of options area of hope that you finally turn to the Lord and pray where you really like go to God and and you're pleading with him because you know that uh, you put your hope in the wrong thing first and foremost, the false hope. You then tried it on your own. You had the like controlled, if I just do this, this, and this, then it'll all work out, controlled kind of hope. And now you're at the point where you're all out of options. You're desperate. Things look bleak. You're discouraged. You're hopeless. Far too often in holiday seasons, in this time of year, as you even look back at this past year, and maybe it didn't go as you wished. Maybe there were things that you had been praying about that God didn't answer. He answered with a no or a not right now. And as you look ahead at 2023, as maybe you listen to this podcast on the topic of hope, you're you're wishful, you're you're hopeful that this year something might play out differently. Well, I want to teach us uh, about the context of hope in Scripture, that as I look at those first three options of what I would call worldly hope, the, the false hope, the controlled hope, and the all-out-of-options hope, I don't see that being a definition in God's Word. In fact, when I look at Scripture, uh, when, when we look at, at Hebrews 11.1 1, in the context of hope, uh, as we look at Romans fifteen thirteen and, and the definition, the, the source of where we even get our hope, I'm encouraged and I really hope, pun intended, that this encourages you to think differently and be challenged in a new and fresh way this year. All right, so let's dive in. If, if you have a Bible, I would just encourage you uh, to turn to Romans 15, 13. Let's kind of start there. And this is uh, the ESV translation, the English standard. It just says this, uh, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. I love that passage. Uh, it's actually the the passage that uh, God used in my life to bring, uh, to allow me to find my wife. Uh, that's another story for another day, but uh, it was just such a, a meaningful passage to me at the time. Uh, in fact, I had seen that verse posted uh, on a bulletin board at our church uh, back when I was a youth pastor, and I never really like camped in that passage or read that passage. Uh, and I want to break that down here in, in a minute, uh, but I want that just Romans 15. 13 to be the foundation kind of for this conversation here over the next couple minutes uh, in context. So we'll come back to that. Uh, but I saw that verse on, posted on a bulletin board in our church as I was walking through. It, it struck me. I felt like God was almost like saying, Eric, slow down. Look at this verse. Uh, it, it was an interesting verse because for the first time, the words popped off the page to me. And I, I thought, man, I need to abound in hope. And, and I'm putting my hope in all the wrong things. I myself uh, could go through that list of uh, I had a false hope, I had controlled hope, I had that all out of options hope. Uh, and I really believe with all my heart that God used that verse to encourage me in a time where I didn't have a lot of hope and I needed some encouragement. Uh, today, we're going to pair that with Hebrews 11, verse 1. You may know very well this verse, but uh, again, out of the ESV, it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. I love that, that combining hope with faith in, in the context of, uh, of our assurance, of our confidence, of the promises that God gives to us. Uh, beautiful passage. Uh, the author of Hebrews is uh, going to go on throughout this passage in, in Hebrews 11, and he talks a lot about uh, the men and women who lived uh, their lives in having a confident living hope. Uh, where it played out in a beautiful way. And so uh, let's just go back to this uh, passage in Romans 15. I want to break down a couple of things here uh, for us to have not a false hope, not a controlled hope, not an all out of options hope, but a living and confident hope in Christ Jesus and in our deliverance of our faith, uh, as we see our faith in Christ play out, when we transfer our hope, our fix our eyes, our focus, our attention on him, on God who provides for us, 
who knows our every need, who when we come to him in prayer, he fills us with this hope that we're going to see. Uh, the New Living Translation, sometimes it's helpful to look at a different context in this passage, but in the New Living Translation, uh, Romans 15, 13, it's beautiful. It says this, uh, I pray... This is Paul writing to the church in Rome. He almost writes it uh, as a prayer. He says, I pray that God, the source of hope, think about that word. You're all out of options. You're, you're having false hope. You're, you're controlled. Where's your hope? Is, is God the source of your hope? Paul says, I pray that God, who, reminder, remember, he is the source of of our hope. It says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely, I love this, with joy and peace because you trust in him. There's this beautiful uh, formulaic response or, or delivery that Paul gives us here. I, and I'm not necessarily saying that it's a formula. It's not like, I don't think he's trying to set it up as an if-then statement. If you put uh, your trust in him, then he'll fill you with joy and peace. I don't know that it's like this vending machine type response, but there is an equation here that seems to matter. What Paul is reminding us is that God is the source of our hope, and he is not a false hope. He is not a controlled in our own circumstances or up to our own ability or gifts, or if we just try harder, then we can have hope. He is the source of our hope. God is the source of our hope, and he will fill us completely with this living and confident hope when we trust in him. That beautiful connection to Hebrews 11, when we put our faith in him, when we take steps of faith, okay, God, I know that I can trust you because last time I found myself in this circumstance, you were there, you were near, you were good. And so this time, while things may seem difficult or challenging, I can trust you to look back and remember on those times where I was discouraged, where I felt alone, you provided, where we see how God led, where we see how he delivered, that helps us to trust him again and again and again. Because you trust him, then he will fill you with joy and peace. I don't know about you, but I can think about times in my own life where I look and I feel like from a worldly perspective, I, I, was, I had false hope. I was all out of options. Things looked bad and discouraging. And yet, because I had a confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit and my hope was in God, I was filled with joy and peace. My, my perspective was different. It wasn't worldly. It wasn't a false hope. It wasn't like, well, I, I, I don't really think this is going to work out. It was a confident hope. It was like, God, no matter what, how this plays out, I trust you. You're good. We're going to see you do, do something amazing in and through this circumstance or this situation. It, it's like almost to the, to the point where you can't even articulate it. Words can't describe the, the peace the joy, the, the feelings that you have. And it's not emotional, it's spiritual. It's because you have this personal relationship with God, who's the source of our hope. And then this last phrase in Romans 15, 13, again, in the New Living Translation, he says, then it's, it's again, this, as you trust in him, you'll be filled with joy and peace. And he says, then you will overflow, I love this part, with a confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Again, it's not through our power. It's not because I'm trying harder, I'm, I have a different perspective, but it's through the work of the Holy Spirit in and through me. That's where our power comes from. That's where we receive the power to trust in him, to grow in our faith, to see our, our crazy circumstances through a different lens and a perspective where we're not putting our hope in our finances, our circumstances, a person, a relationship, a job, an economy, a president, whoever it is. We're putting our hope in God. He's the source of our hope. 
So I just wanted to share that with you. It's such a good reminder. It's something that uh, every December and January I'm mindful of, I'm prayerful about, I'm trying to like dive into the scripture and see, God, where are the ways that I've put my hope in myself, my own abilities? Uh, I'm praying through like, God, what are the the things that I've uh, shifted to put my trust in myself or this or that rather than you? And God's faithful. He always reminds me, shows me, hey, Eric, uh, don't do this. Focus on this. Focus on me. Remember those times in my life where I filled you with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So I wanted to encourage you with that. Thank you for tuning in uh, to this bonus episode. We at Momentum really do hope and pray that you have your best year yet in 2023. Thanks so much for tuning in.